Hi everyone and thank you so much for tuning in today on our workshop on plastics and recycling. I'm Beth Ann and I'm 18 years old and I live in Bury. I'm also a member of the Great Manchester Youth Combined Authority where over the last year we have been working as a group to bring this event to you today. I am very passionate about the environment. I guess that's why we're all here today to learn and to develop our understanding. Sadly, today isn't a live event in a great room, with a fancy lunch, instead we're in an online space. Actually, it's still the summer holidays for me right now. I guess one good thing about this not being a live event today is that the amount of paper, food and drink and miles has been massively reduced. I guess this event will be our greenest ever. Seriously though, we were planning for around 750 people to be with us in a live space. Can you imagine the amount of waste and that we've saved? I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Not so impressed though about missing out on a fancy lunch. <laughs> so today is a short introduction from us, other young people, talking to you about the problems facing our planet today. And for this session, we are focusing on plastics, how much plastic we use in our everyday lives and how we dispose of plastics and recycling. We will also be talking about other kinds of recycling, such as food waste. We've also got some useful resources at the end of the session, which your teacher can share with you. This includes a pledged commitment and some brilliant websites to develop your understanding on these issues. But I must admit, I think they're probably more useful for the adults watching this, as us young people are the ones who are leading the movement and are teaching the adults along the way about the current environmental crisis. So, thanks everyone. Let's get started. First of all, please get ready to pause the session. Of course, after I've explained what you've got to do. So plastic, can I just ask you to stop, take a minute, look in your bag, on your desk, not too disruptive, but can you have a check about the amount of plastic you have on you right now? Teachers, can you have a discussion with your class about the amount of plastic? Come back to us in five minutes.
Right, so I'm guessing that there's a massive debate going on right now about the amount of plastic that you're using. I would invite you to think about how that makes you feel. Do you feel sad? Worried? Are you surprised? Not surprised? Concerned even? Or are you like, wow, I'm awakened to the amount of plastic you have on you? Well, I've just done the same thing. I realise that pretty much everything on me is plastic. Even my beloved phone is covered in plastic, as well as my glasses case, my pencil case, everything. But hey, plastic isn't always bad. Plastic is actually really useful. It's plastic pollution that's the problem we have. Have a watch of these two one minute videos. Click the link. We're all worried about the issue of plastic packaging, but solving it isn't as easy as it may seem. Are bioplastics made from organic materials the answer? Can't supermarkets just make all plastic recyclable? And doesn't plastic packaging keep food fresh and prevent food waste? Today, we're busting the top three myths about plastic solutions. Why can't we just use bioplastics? The term bioplastics can mean two things. Plastics that biodegrade or break down into tiny pieces, creating smaller bits of plastic that are still, well, plastic. Or plastics made up of renewable organic biomass sources like vegetable fats and oils and cornstarch. They seem like a great idea. Who could hate our good friend cornstarch? But they can actually be just as bad as normal plastic. If bioplastics end up in the ocean, they can entangle and endanger sea life just like regular plastic. And making them also uses up valuable land and resources and can require chemical intensive industrial agriculture. Surely recycling can fix the plastic problem. Don't get me wrong, recycling is vital for dealing with waste. I'm not saying you should just start chucking everything in the bin for landfill. But unfortunately, our recycling systems just can't cope with the amount of plastic we currently produce. Plastics can only be recycled a certain number of times, so we can't keep recycling the same thing forever. And making new recycled goods out of the plastic we recycle also uses up a lot of energy and resources. Doesn't plastic packaging prevent food waste? This might seem like a question with a simple answer, but the links between food waste and plastic packaging are complex. Sometimes plastic can increase shelf life, but it also increases food waste in other ways. When foods are packaged together, they have to be a regular shape and size. This is so they can fit into their plastic container. Food that doesn't conform to these standards doesn't make it. That means that food is rejected before it even reaches the shelves. Packaging can also make people buy more than they need. If you only need 10 tomatoes for your signature homemade salsa, but you buy a pack of 16, those last six usually end up forgotten on the bottom shelf of your fridge and eventually get thrown away. So after all this doom and gloom, what is the answer? Ultimately, supermarkets need to reduce the amount of plastic packaging they use in the first place. Sometimes packaging is necessary. Pre-chopped fruit and veg are vital for people who have accessibility issues that make chopping and peeling difficult or impossible. But the vast majority of plastic is not necessary, and stopping excess plastic at the source will mean that there's less of it in circulation and ultimately less plastic in our oceans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. As with everything, there's a whole load of stuff on YouTube about the pros and the cons. On that note, I would like to stop, choose five items that you found earlier and discuss them with your class, both the pros and the cons of these items being plastic. Pause here and have that discussion for 10 minutes.
Hello again, welcome back. Did any interesting ideas come up during the chat? Even though this is pre-recorded, we would love to hear from you what your pros and cons of the plastics were. If your teacher allows, please take a photo of the most debated item and tweet us at Youth Greater Manchester using the hashtag PlasticDebate2020 and we can try and engage with you further. Okay, awesome. So now we would like to move away from the idea of plastics, pros and cons, as we don't have a lot of time. We want to talk to you about plastic pollution and the recycling of plastic because it's the recycling or the lack of that's the issue here. So, school sports and how do we use plastic in sports? I bet you never thought about the amount of plastic used in sports. Well, neither did I until I listened to a podcast for runners that talks about the amount of plastic at organised runs, such as the Manchester 10k. And let's not begin to think about football, our national sport, the sport that we call our own. I guess in Greater Manchester, depending on who you follow, you could call us a footballing sissy. Sorry teachers, but once again, please pause the video and have a discussion about items used with sports. So football, dance, running, hockey, all the sports that you can think of and have a chat about them. Come back to us in five minutes.
If you're on your own watching this, not part of school, I'd encourage you to grab some paper and write down what you thought of. As always, get involved with us on Twitter and catch us at Youth Greater Manchester. Use the hashtag Plastic2020 and share with us what you wrote. So, what is recycling in Greater Manchester? For this session, you might start to feel a little confused, just like I did when writing this session. Again, teachers, please get ready to stop this video and have a quick two minute chat. Here's your question. What do you think is currently recycled in Greater Manchester? Okay, so who guessed steel cans, aluminum cans, plastic bottles, both PET and HDPE, glass jars, foil and cardboard and paper. What about other waste? What can't be recycled? Some of the things that you can't recycle are plastic pots, tubs and trays, they've got to go in your general waste bin. Plastic toothbrush tubes also go in there along with plastic film and any food wrappers you come across. So, let's think about Greater Manchester recycling in comparison. I was a bit confused by this one. Other areas in the country collect all types of plastic for recycling. Why can't we do the same here? Well, it turns out we are doing the same. In those areas that collect plastics together, the items that aren't bottles are removed and disposed of separately as well. The only difference is that in Greater Manchester we separate the plastic before it's collected. This is because the plastic used for bottles is of a much higher quality than the plastic used for other items, meaning that it can be recycled into other items eff effectively. So, how can we improve the situation? One way might be by choosing products that don't use significant amounts of non-recyclable plastic when we're at the shops. We can also use social media to call for manufacturers who wrap their products in non-recyclable plastics to change their methods and use card or paper instead, as these can be recycled. So now we're going to move away from the idea of plastics and have a look at another type of, of waste that is having a large impact on our environment. This is food waste. When we say food waste, you may think of your compost bin, but this isn't the case. Food waste is food that can be slightly past its best, but it's completely edible. 
This may be fresh food such as fruit or veg that can no longer be sold by the supermarket but is still good to eat or tinned and preserved food that has passed its best before but is still good to make a yummy meal. We are now going to show you a short video about the topic of combating food waste. You may recognise a friendly face. Will you be ready to go in five minutes? Oh my god, you're 17 and you're doing all of this. Food shouldn't be too long now. It's tomorrow. This has been the craziest few days of my life. 10 million tonnes of food waste is generated every year in the UK. There's all this food waste and people are hungry in this country. This is heartbreaking to me. So I'm going to take all that unloved food and do something great with it. I'm going to transform a youth centre in one of the most deprived parts of the UK into a fine dining restaurant. Three, two, one. Oh this my God. God. But I've never done anything like this before in my life. Not everyone can afford a fancy meal out and many struggle just to eat three meals a day. I want to create a restaurant right in the heart of their community place where anyone can come together and enjoy a free meal made from food that would otherwise go to waste. I can't do this all by myself so I'm going to ask for help from my friend Megan who lives in Kensington. Have you ever met anyone in this area who's had to rely on food banks? It's a big eye opener to see that it's actually like on your doorstep that people actually suffer right in front of you. We found a place locally that will donate unwanted food to us. This is where we keep the fresh produce. It's not that it's necessarily bad, but it's just a bit below the standards that we'd like to sell. You get a really good menu with this. Yeah. If you're suffering from food poverty, you're likely to be more isolated. So I decided to get out and knock on some doors. We're doing a community meal over at the Seni tomorrow and we're inviting anyone who'd like to come. To do this, I need a creative chef who can help me create a menu from the food that we're gonna get. We've got some rice. Some cauliflower. Chickpeas. Chickpeas, coconut milk. We could make a fetch curry. Starters, maybe we could do something with the onions. Like onion soup, maybe. Onion barges. If this restaurant's going to make it, this food needs to be incredible. And I need to transform this into a fancy restaurant. This is the space that we've got um, for this event. I've got together some NTS volunteers to help me set everything up. So we need to be moving that up. That, wait a sec, we need to move this first. There's so much to do before five o'clock when we open. Oh my God, look at this. It's wonderful, isn't it? I'm gonna sit over here. I feel massive responsibility for these people that we've invited. If they turn up and we're not ready, that is gonna be awful. Will you be ready to go in five minutes? Yeah, about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah. You call me when you're ready. The food shouldn't be too long now, they're starting to plate up. The food should hopefully be out soon. A service, please. What, what a lovely meal it's been and how it's been made from all things that were going to be thrown away. It's amazing that the community's come together to help me create yeah. this. You enjoying it? Yeah, it's tasty. Oh, it must be a lovely time of meal out. When was the last time? A few years ago, like. We just really wanted to say thank you because it's not like we often get out, so it's really nice to be waiting on hand How old are you? I'm 17. Oh my God, you're 17 and you're doing all of this. Well done to you, honestly. What you do for the community, it's, um, you're, you're on a winner. Can we go and have a minute on my own and cry? Oh, thank you so much. I actually am. Okay, goodbye. Could I ask Bethan to come up here, please? It's amazing that this project is going to open 
once a month from now on, hopefully until the end of time. I'd just like you all to give it a big round of applause. I'm stood here up at the front with everyone and they're clapping. All I want to do is cry because it feels so amazing, so crazy, but all this work has turned out good. That is just awesome. Now it's sadly time to say goodbye. We are all very grateful for you getting involved today. We hope you enjoyed our session on plastics and recycling and have fun being challenged to think differently. We call ourselves change makers. Some of the group are part of climate strikes and other movements. We all have a passion for making the world a better place. Do you? So we wanted to leave you with some plastic wins. And if these people can win, then so can we. All individually, in our schools, in our homes, and in our communities. Some of these wins include the carrier bag levy and how it brings in money for charities. Bamboo toothbrushes that can be used instead of the plastic ones. Bread wrappers that are using less plastic. Biodegradable bags at some convenience stores. Toothpaste tubes that are recyclable. 30p of hot drinks when a recyclable cup is used. Lush and other brands that have created solid shampoo and conditioner bars instead of using plastic bottles. And even plastic free school canteens. In Greater Manchester, there's also been 558 pledges for the plastic free GM project that involves councils, businesses, and education. So that's all from me today then. It's been so lovely to be able to share some of my knowledge with you. I hope you enjoyed the session and make sure you have a check at the resources that you're gonna get in a minute. Bye everybody.